Hey, John here. I'm just messing around with a breakout board design that I've been tinkering around with, and I've run into some interesting issues that you might find handy to know about. First of all, how do you put parts on a 45 degree angle like this? I'm not sure I mentioned this before. But when you import your net list and your parts are wherever they're going to be, they, they're going to be on right angles. And if you hit R, they're going to rotate 90 degrees. But what if you want a chip like this on a 45 degree angle? Well, you go on this, you select it, you hit E to edit the part. And over here, under rotation, by default, when you when you put a, a new part down on your, uh, your, your board. Let me see, I'll go grab a regular one. See, this one's rotated at zero degrees. And if I hit R, and then I edit it again, you'll see it's at 90. So every time you hit R, it cycles through these. But if you click Other, I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that particular one. If you hit Edit in here and you click on Other, you can type in any angle you want. This is a multiple of 45 degrees. I moved it 45 uh, counterclockwise in order to get it right where I wanted it. Okay? So that's how you get these things on, on an angle like this. Same with these capacitors around here. So you might find that useful. Another thing... I've got these jumpers I've been playing around with over here to, you know, allow myself to program it and really hit the reset line and thing, like for an FTDI adapter board or something. But I'm finding that I don't think I want to do that. I'm lost interest in that. I'm going to delete all these uh, headers and just push some push button switches in here. And if you go to your um, symbol library, if you load the DigiKey library, you can go to tactile. Oops, if you spell it right. And you can see that these tactile switches in here. There's a couple of different ones. Uh, they all have the same uh, interesting uh, phenomenon going on here. Let's look at what's going on. This footprint shows the wire connecting around between pins three and four. Now, the reason I, I want to point this out is because KeyCAD does not know or understand the fact that these two pins are wired into the same net. All right, let's look at the uh, design or the data sheet for this part, okay? First things you notice is, num first of all, the pins are numbered wrong, in my opinion. This is essentially a dip package, and they've numbered one, two, three, and four like this, like no other dip component on Earth. If it were a standard dip numbering, it would be one, two, three, four in clockwise order. So first of all, bear that in mind when you're thinking about the, chi uh, the pin numbers. Second of all, the schematic drawing does match the footprint that you get in KeyCAD's library. And it looks like this. Pins one and two are wired together and three and four are wired together electrically. And that is true. I've used these before. I got a whole bunch of these. And what that means is when they made the lead frame for this thing, this is probably all one piece of metal that runs from the top to the bottom. This pin here and this one are physically the same metal. And three over here and four over there are also the same metal. All right. Now, the interesting thing here is just because the footprint shows a wire connecting around here does not mean that KeyCAD knows that these two are the same net. To demonstrate this phenomenon, let's look and see what happens when we do a DRC on the schematic the way it is right now. Okay, first of all, I forgot to annotate this. It'll be switch one, okay? Now let's go ahead and do a DRC. It'll probably gripe that the four pins on that are not connected to anything. Okay, great. That's exactly what it should say. Okay, uh, let's just de delete this part for now. So we get a clean DRC and run it again. We got nothing, all right. Let's say you do something crazy and you connect uh, oops, ground and power together like this. One hopes that we would see a DRC error, right? Run. Okay, yes. Conflict between pins. Uh, where is that? Okay, so it showed up over here, but that showed up because I've connected this power to uh, the, um, the, VC, the V bus power up here, okay? Actually, I connected it to 3.3 volts. But the point is, because I shorted power and ground together, I got an error. That's a good thing. You do not want to have a situation where that is not noted. Okay, so let's say we put the tactile switch back in here. And you go like this. And for some reason, you put ground down here. And you copy and you put 3.3 volts up here. We wire this together like so. Save it, do a design rule check, 
and we delete the markers, run it again, and uh, once again, we must donate the part. Okay, save, design rule check, delete the markers, run. No. Okay, it's griping about these two pins, but it is not griping that I've shorted power and ground together. To shut that up, let's do this, and just hook these pins up to ground. Save. First of all, let's run one like this. We know these two pins are connected together. We know these two are connected together. In theory, it should not complain about this because it is connected to ground. And it should complain about this because I've shorted power and ground together. And in this particular case, it'll do the opposite of that whole thing, right? It says, oh, you got to connect pin one, even though it doesn't matter because I know they're wired together inside and it's not griping about this, okay? Keep that in mind when you use these tactile switches, all right? Um, this is uh, an interesting phenomenon. I kind of played around with defining these switches myself a while ago, and I ran into this issue. It's just the way it is. Uh, if you want to match the manufacturer and call this pin one and two, these are different pins as far as KeyCat is concerned, and they are, you know, they're separate nets. On the other hand, just like the power um, uh, regulator, that you might be familiar with. This is the power regulator circuit from our breadboard power supply, and this is the USB connector from our breadboard power supply that I did in a prior video. If you look at this part, what happens is you got one, two, and three, all right? If you then look at the footprint for this part, quit on there, edit this, open up this footprint. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to whoop, edit. I want to browse footprints. So in this particular case, there are two separate places for pin two to go, all right? The schematic editor doesn't care that there's actually two real pin twos on this thing. So one way out of this uh, tactile switch dilemma would have been call to call both of these pin one and both of these pin three or something like that, okay? At which point, KeyCAD would know that whether I hook things to here and there, it's the same thing because they have the same number, same identifier. On the other hand, if you have two pin twos or two pin ones or whatever in the PC board, then it wants you to connect them together on the PC board, uh, which you may not want to do. So you're kind of stuck either way with this particular kind of component. You just want to simply keep that in mind, all right? One way to do it is to simply draw a line like this and then let KeyCAD know that they really are connected. If you lay this thing out in the PC board, it's going to tell you you have to connect these two pins together with real copper on the PC board. And maybe that's convenient for you, or maybe it's not. So one way or another, you've got to keep all this in, in mind when you use uh, components that have this kind of uh, pinning. Also, it's very difficult to delete the wire without deleting the part when you put it that close. So be careful. <laughs> All right, so one other thing. Uh, I very oftentimes open source my hardware designs with the CERN license, and I like to put the logo on there like this. And as we saw earlier in earlier video, I like to put the uh, footprint in my silk screen or directly in the copper when I do my boards, okay? Now, if you were to do this, I may have mentioned it in an earlier video, uh, if you, you know, import your new net list and you say delete, you know, extra footprints and so on, this would go away, right? But this is just like those mounting hole issues that came up in, in the last video that I did. So if you want to, if you place this down, first of all, this comes out of the uh, library, it's called uh, Logo Open Hardware Small, right? So inside here, if you just search for logo, you see a number of things in here. You can get whatever, bacon, cooking, and other such things, right? Okay, so you've now got yourself a logo. Let's put another one down and start over again. Let's go to the logo. That happens to be the small one right here, okay? Small logo, all right? If I hit E to edit this thing, it is a symbol like any other symbol in your schematic. 
just like the mounting holes were symbols. See this pound sign over here? This tells the key CAD not to care about the footprint because it's just a, a, a symbolic thing that's on the schematic. It does need to be annotated, by the way. If I was to do something like export it right now, it would say, oh, this has not been annotated yet. So you're going to have to put logo one or something on here. But this pound sign, if you leave the pound sign there, all right, it tells KeyCAD not to worry about it in any interesting way. I'm going to delete this switch to clean up my noise for a minute. Save. Let's go in here and delete the markers. Make sure everything's good. Yes. Save the thing, make a net list. All right. If we were to import this net list right now, of course, this is not particularly interesting because there's no footprint associated with it yet. Let's go in here. What did I call this? I called that logo one. I call this logo one. That's weird. Hmm. Let's call this one logo two, so I don't have that confusion. It turns out they're different and unique because there has a pound sign in front of it, but that's beside the point that I'm trying to make here. Uh, if we import this net list into this board, it could be some other noise I was working out. And nothing, it did nothing at all. So it means that the, you know the, these two projects are in sync. If I edit this and I give it a footprint. This is sort of like the mounting hole situation. They, it turns out it's in the symbol. On one, it's the logo. On the other one, it's a symbol. It'd be nice if we keep all these terminology just right. But and there's all kinds of stuff. You can even put little key cat things, I guess, or whatever. C, E, F, C, C, what else is in here? There's the open hardware, uh, all sorts of neat things. All right. It turns out the one that I like is like the uh, this one or something. I like it to say open source hardware. The other ones down here just say open hardware. They're either, you can pick a copper one or a silk screen one. I'm choosing the silk screen. I like to actually put them in the copper when I can, but I'm choosing a silk screen one right now because I know there won't be enough room in the copper to put this when I'm done routing this board, all right? I'm gonna make this one a different size than the one that's already on the board, just so you can see the difference. This will be a little bit bigger. Now I got a footprint. Notice. I left the pound sign in front of the uh, uh, in front of the reference. Okay, save. Now I make a net list because that's a real symbol. It's in my net list. Okay, where am I doing here? So let's say we bring in the net list. What happens? Nothing. Why not? Why didn't I get another one? Well, I didn't get another one because it has a pound sign in front of it. This is the only difference I'm going to make. I'm going to remove this pound sign, hit OK, and go ahead and do another one of these if we want to. Nothing's wrong. Net list. Import. And ding! The only difference is I've got a new footprint added to my schematic, which is the one that's bigger than this one, right? So, a couple of things. Number one, this is a real part with a real footprint. I don't need to lock it on the board in order to prevent it from disappearing the next time I import a net list if I choose delete the extra ones and so on, right? Actually, it should be fine because I didn't do anything, no changes. Um just like the mounting holes. So that might be a fancy little trick that you might want to consider. I mean, basically, it's the same thing as the mounting hole, right? But you might not think of it in terms of just, you know, oh, I want to put, you know, something in the, in the uh, silk screen or something like that. So those are just a few little caveats I ran into this afternoon while playing around with this design. I hope you got some value out of this. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe there's some other handy tricks like this that, uh, that you'd like to share with everybody. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.